Dear learners, I am Ms. Pankti Survey, Assistant Professor, Department of Sociology from the Institute of Distance and Open Learning, University of Mumbai. This is our first video tutorial where we will discuss about Module 1, which is Introduction to Sociology. In this video tutorial, we will understand what is sociology, understand its emergence and look at a few most important thinkers of sociology. So to begin with, let us first understand what is sociology. To put it in simple terms, sociology is the scientific study of human societies. Sociologists examine collective interactions within a particular society. It seeks to examine how societies are established and evolve, that is, how they change with time. It is the science that deals with human society. Let us look at a few definitions of sociology. Sociology has been defined differently by many sociologists. To give you an example, George Simmel opines that it is a subject which studies human relationships. Emile Durkheim defines sociology as the science of collective representation. Giddens simply defines sociology as the scientific study of society. So now the question arises, from where does the discipline of sociology originates from? It is important to note that there were three major factors that led to the origin of sociology as a discipline. The enlightenment, success of natural sciences and the industrial revolution. It was August Comte who coined the term sociology and made substantial contributions to make it a discipline. Friends, there are a number of sociologists who have made and are still contributing to make immense contribution to the field of sociology. Let us look at a few pioneers of sociology. As I mentioned earlier, it was August Comte who coined the term sociology and made substantial contributions to make it a discipline. His important works include Positive Philosophy, Law of Three Stages, Hierarchy of Sciences, Positivism, Social Statics and Dynamics. He opened that sociology must follow the methods of natural sciences. That is, sociologists must use scientific method to study social life. Let us now look at the law of three stages, which is an important work of Comte. Comte viewed society as passing through three distinct periods or stages. The first is what he called the theological stage, also known as the fictitious stage, where people understood the occurring in society in terms of their religious beliefs. The Renaissance marks the second stage called as the metaphysical or the abstract stage, where people started seeing social life as an expression of human nature. Later, the discoveries of Newton and Galileo gave rise to the third stage, also known as scientific stage in which science replaced religion and philosophy. This together is what Comte meant by positivism, meaning knowledge is to be derived from empirical sources, that is, scientific approach should be applied to the social world. Another important contribution of August Comte is his theory of the hierarchy of sciences, where he says that sciences are arranged according to the increasing order of complexity. According to him, subjects like astronomy and mathematics are the most general and provide the foundation. The next stages include physics, chemistry and biology with sociology and social sciences forming the apex. Sciences develop over time beginning with the most general, scientific discipline, which is the first to reach the positive stage. Comte's theory of hierarchy of sciences is connected with the theory of the law of three stages. According to him, mathematics and astronomy, which he considers to be the most general and simple of all natural sciences, develops first. In time, it is later followed by physics, chemistry, biology and finally sociology. Each science develops with the principle of increasing complexity and decreasing generality. According to him, social sciences offers the attributes of the completion of the positive method, whereas the natural sciences are preparatory stages for the same. Another important sociologist is Imal Durkheim, whose major work asserted that behavior must be understood in the larger social context rather than as an individual. His works include collective conscience, division of labor, theory of suicide and elementary forms of religious life. His important contribution is the term collective conscience. Now what does collective conscience mean? Let us first break the terms. Collective refers to something 
shared by a group and is not limited to an individual. Consens refers to that part of our mind that tells you if what you are doing is right or wrong. So, in short, collective consens refers to an underlying set of moral values that binds the individuals of the society together and makes them believe that they belong to something larger than themselves. This together gives rise to the solidarity. Before we move on further, solidarity means the support of one group for another due to its shared aims. Durkheim noticed that human society was characterized by two kinds of solidarity, mechanical and organic. According to Durkheim, the traditional society was characterized by mechanical solidarity, which means a relatively small society marked by homogeneity, whereas an organic society is marked by interdependence amongst the larger number of people. Mechanical solidarity occurs in the society having similar members, whereas in the organic solidarity, societies have various types of individuals. It is the pre modern society characterized by mechanical solidarity, and the modern ones are characterized by the organic solidarity. If you look at this picture, you can see that the traditional societies have lower interdependence and division of labor, whereas in the organic societies, each one survives on the principle of interdependence with complex division of labor. Another interesting theory of Durkheim is his theory of suicide. When we think of why a person commits suicide, we may think of various reasons like the loss of job or breaking up of a relationship or due to any of the failures. Durkheim, however, saw that there are social causes that always results in suicide. His theory that suicide can have origins in social causes rather than just being due to individual temperament was groundbreaking at that time. He developed the theoretical typology of suicide to explain various effects of social factors and how it may lead to suicide. According to Durkheim, egoistic suicide takes place as a result of complete detachment from the society. The individual feels completely left out. Let's take an example. When a juvenile delinquent returns back to the society but feels left out due to lack of acceptance, may end up becoming a criminal or may end up committing a suicide. The opposite of egoistic suicide is altruistic suicide. When the individual, due to excessive regulation, may end up killing oneself for the well being or end benefit of the society. The classic example of altruistic suicide are the military men who sacrifice their lives for the well being of the society. Fatalistic suicide occurs under the condition of extreme regulation and restrictions. In such a situation, a person may prefer death rather than surviving in the oppressive conditions. Such suicides generally take place among the prisoners. Anomic suicide, on the other hand, is the result of lack of regulations, creating a sense of confusion and disconnection from the society. Anomy occurs during the period of economic and social upheavals. The next classical sociologist who is extremely famous and whose thoughts are found to be relevant even today is Karl Marx. I am sure you might have read about him before. According to Marx, population is divided into two classes, the bourgeois and the proletariats. The bourgeois are the owners of the means of production, whereas the proletariats constitutes the working class. Marx says that there is an exploitative relationship between the two, wherein the bourgeois, that is the owners of the means of production, constantly exploit the proletariats, that is the workers. He calls this type of society as a capitalist society. He extensively spoke on how the working class, later on, even after playing a major role in production, faces alienation at different stages. Another major thinker of sociology is Max Weber. His important contributions to the discipline includes Protestant ethics and the spirit of capitalism, his ideas on bureaucracy, which means a rigid, formalized organizational structure, which he actually sees as a consequence of rationalization. Further, he contributed the term Verstehen, which means the basic understanding of why people do the things that they do. His concepts of iron cage, rationalization and social action gained massive attention. So, 
So dear friends, in this video, we looked at how sociology emerged as a discipline and gradually gained importance in the society. We also looked at how different classical thinkers played a major role by observing various occurrings in the society and providing influential theories for the same. Remember, these are only a few theories. There are number of sociologists that have made immense contributions to the respective fields. You will gradually learn about them as and when we move on further. These are the two important books which I have referred to for the video lecture. You can use them to further explore various concepts related to sociology. These are available in our library as well as online for purchase. In the next video tutorial, we will explore different perspectives on sociology. Till then, refer to your study material and try to solve the questions that have been given in between to check your progress. Till then, thank you very much and see you soon.